Welcome! Today we've got a short video on repellent platforms, so let's have a look exactly how they work. So effectively, it increases the path or the path that the enemies think they have to take to get to you. This makes it so that they're going to walk around the platforms, but we can't completely abuse this and build a great wall because they will walk over it if the path goes too far. Sometimes the platforms can be a little bit awkward and don't always work how you think they should work, and you also can't stand on the platforms because the bugs will just ignore it and they'll still attack you. To be safe, just try not to stand on any engineer's platforms. When it comes to building your paths, I normally say stick to the rule of four, that is to put four platforms down and don't go any further than that, but we can actually test this here, so now we've gone up to five to see whether we still get our bugs going around and it still seems to be working. So then I tried it with six just to see if that would make any difference, and we can see we're still getting them to clump up, so actually six is working okay here, so you could potentially, depending on the position, maybe push it to six. Now I've gone to seven and we're starting to get some kind of divergence the ai is going on round up this arch over here which isn't quite what we wanted but i guess it's still kind of working but then if we go to eight or even nine platforms here we can see if this makes much of a difference and we've got two rogue ones here who've just gone nope i don't like it you've, you've cheesed it too much and the rest have gone around this arch and then if we move it around here to so 10 12 platforms and you can see that all of the bugs just completely ignore it pretty much, so we've pushed it too far. I did quite a few tests with a sidewall, and you can actually push the limits of this quite a bit, depending on the terrain situation. So let's examine some actual practical solutions with the platforms, and here we have just a normal wave coming through a tunnel. This is 30 grunts, just seeing what they do. I start off by just putting two platforms on the ceiling, just to see whether that is going to make any difference, and we can see they clump up a little bit more on this right hand side, but there's still some are going on the left hand side, so it's a lot better even with just two platforms. We now extend this out to four platforms to see what difference it does, and this time we can see the 30 grunts, they're all clumping up on this right hand side, it makes it a lot easier for us to fire our breach cutter shots and maximise our damage. This is a bit more of a normal tunnel situation, so perhaps you've heard a wave come in and you set up quickly in a tunnel. So here we can see with no platforms, the enemies are going all over the walls. We start off with a really simple, just four platforms on the ceiling, hopefully forcing our enemies to go on the lower ground, easier for breach cutter and plasma grenades. So here we can see there's still some going off on the walls, but it's less often. With an additional three platforms putting our total to seven, we're gonna try and force them all to stay on that left-hand side and off of the ceiling. The wave is far easier to deal with, saving us ammo, potentially damage and time. In this next example, it's a far more complicated position to try and defend. We've got this sort of cliff face here, and it's a much larger section. So I'm using the rule of four here, putting the platforms down, leaving a gap so that we can still get our enemies into the different firing arcs. I also want to try and not have them going all along the ceiling. So I put these sort of ceiling barriers over here on each side, because I'm trying to force them to go onto the lower ground where I've left those gaps, either on the far left, the far right, or in the middle with the spawn comes that way. This wave has formed at the bottom of that cliff face, and we can see they've come on the left-hand side and the right-hand side, perfect for what we wanted. And now we can see the wave which has been formed on the other side of the cave, in that little hole over there, and they've still come across. Some are going on the ceiling, but the majority are on this lower side. Again, perfect for our blow-through or any grenades that we've got. In this example from a live game now, you can see I've adhered to the rule of four. It's trying to make it so I've got a gap on this left hand side, a gap in the middle, and then a gap on the right, so I've only got three places I really need to focus. You can get creative using your platforms, and I recommend you load up into some games and just play around with the rule of four, maybe pushing that to five or six if you can. The idea is just to clump up as many enemies as possible. Sometimes you need to defend in the open, for example if you've got a black box or an uplink that you need to protect, and if it's not in a cave it can become a challenge to try and defend this position. What you can do is sort of build a defensive circle and we're doing exactly the same principle here. We're trying to reduce the amount of angles that they can attack us from. And we can see this in practice now as I'm defending the middle and you can see that the actual enemies are taking the long path round to find one of these gaps to come through. This makes it easier for me to deal with clumped up enemies and because I've then done this evenly in this sort of circumference circle around myself it doesn't matter what angle that the enemies spawn from, they're going to be heading towards one of these gaps for me to defend. 
Setting up our platforms like this makes it far easier for us to defend and for our allies as well. Instead of having to have 360 degree vision, we can just focus on these small gaps and therefore it's far easier for somebody to spot the enemies and deal with them clumped up. This is an example from stage 3 of an elite deep dive and we can see here that the black box is in a bit of a nightmare position. It's at the top of this sort of spire, a very small and narrow top to defend and also we've got quite a low ceiling. So I do this principle, I do our four platforms leaving a gap but I also mirror this on the ceiling. This is to make it so it's going to be far easier for my allies when they're defending because when you've got a gap, that gap is where you're going to be looking for if they're going to be coming on to where we are at the top of this narrow spire fire or on the ceiling. This is making it so that they can just focus on small firing arcs, not having to quickly spin around all the time to try and see what is going on. This makes life so much easier, especially when you've got a very small place to defend like this, and also whenever you've got a place to defend where the enemies can crawl upwards. This is why cliff faces, when you're close to a cliff face, is quite difficult, because they're going to be straight on top of you as soon as they climb over that ledge. Just by having these platforms to, to funnel them into gaps, it can make life so much easier and make the difference to your team. What I often do on a dozer mission is what I call a defensive C position. So this is just with platforms around where the dozer is drilled through and this is going to make it just like our tunnels. It's going to clump the enemies up on one side and this can make life a lot easier for say a plasma grenade. And then what I'm going to try and do is keep our enemies when they're coming around the side. It's just I want them lower at ground level. This is going to make it far easier for breach cutter shots and for plasma grenades as well. In our final example you can see I've got platforms on ground level going out and at a higher point. The higher point is to stop them from just climbing down off of that side straight into where we are defending and then this bottom side is just extending the path so they have to walk round. You see that I actually stand on the platforms, that's my mistake, that brings the exploders to me, I shouldn't have stood on the platforms. What I have shown you here is by no means the only way to use a platform gun with repellent. You can use it in different ways and I recommend you go out and experiment and find different ways that you want to do it. This is just basic information to get you started. I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time.